Okay, so today I'm going to be doing some testing with the new uh, Chronograph Mark II. Uh, this is my new design. It's, a, it's mostly 3D printed. It's going to be using some sensors that I've designed. They're going to be available for purchase shortly. Um, first thing we need to do is actually make sure that the clock on the Arduino is accurate. I found that they can be out by up to about 1%. So this is an interesting way of testing that. I had an old method that I used Python. Um, a script on Python and um, some firmware that, that communicated with that to test the clock speed. There's a bunch of other methods. This is a very simple way using a, a metronome. So first thing, the firmware that I have, that I've written here, there's a, the first menu you, when you boot up, you just hit the right button on the display and it's gonna flash at one hertz. So with that flashing at one hertz, It's not quite lined up, but there's a little bit of an offset. So, so right now that seems to be flashing a little bit slower than the than the, the the metronome is pulsing. So now you can see how the clock on this Arduino is actually a little bit slower than the metronome. There's a little bit of a delay between the tick and this lighting up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn the number down, maybe 0.5% to 995. So that's, that's the number of micros between flash, or sorry, the number of milliseconds between flashes. There you have it. That, uh, this Arduino is 0.9% uh, slow, so we just had to speed it up that much. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, about 10 shots using this airsoft pistol I have. It's a CO2 powered pistol. Uh, the CO2 cartridge hasn't been replaced in a while, so I don't know how fast they're gonna be. Maybe after 10 shots, I'll replace the cartridge. Um, depending how fast the shots are, I don't wanna waste a whole uh, CO2 cartridge. Um, and then I'm gonna record uh, the speeds reported by the Mark I and the Mark II uh, chronographs, and we'll see how they compare. So they look, they look pretty good. Um, they're consistently offset by two to 2.4%, um, actually 2.1 to 2.4%. So that's really close. The interesting thing is that um, the Mark II is, uh, is ahead of the Mark I. So, so the airsoft bullet goes through the Mark II sensor before the Mark I sensor. I'm wondering if it slows down by this much um, between the two sensors. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna replace them. I'm gonna put the Mark I over here and the Mark II over here and see what the results are. Okay, so these are the new numbers. And as you can see, um, the first chronograph, which is now the Mark I, is always faster than the second chronograph. So if you look over here, oh, sorry, wrong page. Here, where the Mark II is always about 2.4% faster than the Mark I, and now the Mark I is about 5% faster than the Mark II. The, I have the Mark II is 4.9% slower than the Mark I. Um, it's very consistent, which I'm quite happy with. Uh, 4.8 to 5.1%. That's great. Um, I don't know if I don't know what's causing the error. Uh, maybe that clock, uh, that clock rate um, uh, calibration factor that I showed you earlier is an issue, or um, maybe I measured it incorrectly. It's only off by what's that's about mm, uh, one or two percent. So that's not bad, uh, but it is something I'll look into. The other thing to note is that I didn't actually measure the distance between the two chronographs. So, so the distance between the two chronographs here might be different, probably bigger than the difference distance between the chronographs on the last test. So I don't know what's caused. That may be an issue, but I don't know that for sure.
right, so here's the results. Um, again, we got some pretty good consistency. It's all within 0.4% uh, on this side and all within 0.4% on this side. So on my original, there was one shot where the chronograph failed to capture the shot. Um, that's uh, that's not really, that's a pretty good, um, it's, it's pretty good at catching them if you're just using it for uh, measuring bullet speeds. If you're taking photo, high speed photos and you've done a complete setup and it misses a shot, that's where it becomes a real pain. So um, interestingly, the Mark II, the new one that I've never used before now, it's been consistent. It's caught every single shot that I've put through it. So yeah, um, again, I think uh, before I continue testing, I'm gonna investigate this error because you can see it's always, um, uh, there's, there's a bit more of a negative error. The Mark II is always measuring a little bit slower than the Mark I. So I'm gonna look into that before I take it out for some more powerful rifles. Um, I have a few uh, uh, firearms that I'm gonna bring out to, uh, to a range and uh, put it through the same test there. I just wanna show something about the, uh, um, the chronograph that I found kind of interesting. The original Mark I, which is closer, I found it to be easier to shoot through because there's those bolts on the side which mark where your where the sensors are located. Um, on the Mark II, but hey, you can't really tell where the sensors are located. Um, so thankfully, I've included in the design a couple um, a couple holes where I can put M2 screws, and hopefully those will be more useful for uh, being able to look down and see where you need to shoot in order to go through the sensors. If you go too low, uh, it's not going to go through the sensors and won't catch the shot. So that's why it's important to make sure and, and shoot in the right area. Um, so yeah, I'll install those before the next shots and see how it works. So one of the things that's quite interesting um, is that I, I didn't have to set up the sensor sensitivity um, since uh, putting the sensors together. So, so whenever I um, assemble one of these sensors, I have a little test stand that I can put it on and it makes sure that all the sensors are working. Uh, and I use that test stand to set the, the sensor sensitivity. But um, I'm just gonna show you how um, that is set. So, so this is the sensor case. All you do is open up the screw. It's a little M2 screw. Uh, just loosen it off a bit and then it opens up. So inside are each of the sensors um, and then a couple test pads. So the test pads, you can use a digital multimeter and set it so that they're all consistent. Uh, I usually found about 70 millivolts difference between the two test pads. Uh, what that is, is one test pad, uh, I can't remember which is which at the moment. One test pad is the sensors, uh, the photodiode's current voltage, and the other one is a uh, biased, uh, uh, voltage that's uh, that's on the other side of a low pass filter so so it automatically adjusts for the amount of light striking it but if the light changes very quickly then the two voltages cross and that's when the sensor uh, sends a signal so yeah all you need is a very tiny Phillips screwdriver uh, I think it's number zero zero Phillips screwdriver now if you turn this on uh, turn on the the display you can go to a setting or to to the first page the first menu position shows the current sensor output and when there's nothing in front of the sensors you want that to show a hundred percent so that there's there's a hundred percent or or rather zero zero signal from the sensor so so that's a hundred percent light striking the sensor um, turning it to the right uh, makes the sensors less sensitive turning it to the left makes it more sensitive but you can have uh, false activations so so it's it's a matter of finding that balance now there's also these uh, jumpers here and so when you remove the jumpers, it deactivates a sensor. So you wanna have four jumpers on each, uh, on each sensor. Um, but you can take them off in order to diagnose an individual sensor, just have one attached. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good way of setting the sensitivity. Uh, the quick way is just to have them all attached. Go and start turning the sensor, so start at the bottom one. Turn it left until you start seeing um, false signals coming into the, the, the display and then turn it back to the right until it stops. And just go to the next one, turn it left until you see those uh, false signals, and then turn it back to the right a little bit. Go on all the way through. 
So here's that uh, that menu that I mentioned earlier, that first menu that shows the status of the two sensors. Right now it says um, 100% or 100 for both sensors. So that means that there is no signals coming from the sensor. So if I was to put a screwdriver through rapidly, the number would change. It doesn't go down to zero unless you have a massive blockage like that. So this right now, the, the A gate says zero. That means that there's there's a hundred percent signal coming from the sensor. There's no opportunity to catch a bullet. Um, if it's anything but a hundred, if it's if it's 99, that means that it's 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 getting a signal from the sensor. It's it's detecting something. Yeah. So here's here's the display. Um, you can see it's hundred percent right now. I'm just gonna put my screwdriver through quickly. So now you can see it just dropped a bit. My screwdriver is pretty small, so that's why it's such a small signal. If my whole hand goes in front of it, there's zero. I'm gonna put my hand in front of the B sensor so there you go and a is back i removed my hand from a and removed my hand from b so yeah that's that's how that works So I'm going to go over the results of these tests. Um, here's all the results. Uh, one thing to note is that the Mark 1 chronograph was, uh, it, I know it's an accurate chronograph because I've used it for high speed photography. Um, I've used it to take a photograph of a bullet uh, traveling about 750 meters per second. So, so I know it works well. Um, and the Mark 2, they're basically comparing against each other because uh, they're both basically the same design. The Mark II, of course, is a lot more easier to build. Um, so when you're looking at the airsoft rounds, um, drag is a big issue here. But when you look at the, the, the error, when the test setup is the same, the error percent is, is fairly consistent. It changes about 0.4%. Um, so that's pretty tight. Same thing here on test set two, which is uh, the airsoft pistol again, except that the chronographs are reversed. Um, the uh, uh, the error is always within 0.4%. So um, drag is still an issue with the pellet rifle, but not as much. Uh, the interesting thing here is is that's our first um, that's our first round that was missed uh, by the Mark One. The Mark Two didn't miss any rounds. The Mark One missed a round here. That's why I have 11 tests just to just to make up for that one I missed. Um, it may have been an error, an issue where I'm not firing quite through the chronograph. The, the sensing area is kind of small, so it's difficult to aim through. Um, but when we go to the faster rifles, so moving on to the, the 22, um, here's where, this is the, the part where I had quite a few uh, missed shots. Um, this is also the first rifle where I was using a scope. So that's a bit of a challenge to be firing through the small sensing area when there's a scope. I couldn't really use the iron sights. Um, one thing, another thing to note here is that uh, this, this outlier right here, um, this is the only test where the Mark II actually measured faster than the Mark I and wasn't caused by drag. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, the rest of the groups were pretty, pretty close. Um, the Mark II missed one, two, three shots and the Mark I missed one shot here. Um, at first I was concerned that that might be an issue related to the, the speed of the bullet, but when we move on to the fastest projectiles, so this is this is travel. These are, these projectiles are going from 800 to 875 meters per second. That's very fast. Um, we only missed one projectile. The Mark II missed one. Um, the Mark I didn't miss any. So so I'm probably blaming um, marksmanship issues. I may not have been firing quite through the sensing area. Uh, these were all scoped rifles, so it was kind of difficult to aim at the uh, uh, the chronographs. But um, yeah, so measuring at speeds of up to 875 meters per second or 2,800 feet per second, 
Um, these all seem to be within a fairly tight tolerance of each other. So, so it's consistently about 1.2% offset. So yeah, there's the results. Um, thank you very much for watching.